Michael Jacobs. I'd like to welcome you to the Explosive Golf Show. Today we're going to cover two topics in the show. First, we're going to continue our discussion of the well-timed release, with our concentration being the coupling point. And we're also going to add some new information in there on shaft deflection and what the club is doing and how it's behaving in real life during that phase. Start off by making two announcements, quick announcements. I'm hosting two great educational opportunities for everyone here on Long Island in October. Tuesday, October 11th is a GTE Golf Teacher Excellence with myself and GTE founder Brian Manzella. Hot topics in the golf industry today will be covered. The D-plane, ball flight, using a track man when teaching, using a flight scope when teaching. We'll also cover some new ideas on the release and teaching in the real world with 3D. The two days after that, October 12th and 13th, I will be hosting the first ever flight scope convention here on Long Island. A perfect opportunity for not only flight scope owners, but for all those interested in learning more about teaching with 3D Doppler radar. So I would definitely look into those. First two explosive golf shows here on the couple point, describing it, what it does, why it's important to identify it. I'm not going to repeat the information. You can watch show one and two anytime you want. And there was a lot of questions. I received a lot of emails talking about it. And I think a lot of the answers are just right in there. If you don't have your own agenda and people are not trying to confuse people on the information. So I suggest you rewatch those other two shows. I will touch on a couple of different topics here. Uh, one of the most important things about identifying this point between the hands is uh, it takes a very well-defined path. Forever in golf instruction, it was always monitoring the butt of the club and people drawing butt of the club points and where it points at different points in the swing or the right forefinger um, and where it is on the back of the club. As we get into this show and I get into shaft deflection, a lot of people are going to be embarrassed when I talk about what the right forefinger and what the shaft is doing, really. But anyway, where these two hands join is a point of reference that gives us a very well-defined path. The butt of the club and underneath the couple are making very extreme movements while this couple point is taking a very well-defined path. So that's why I described it and it's a great concentration point. Let's get a little more into the content and I'm going to introduce you to some ideas about shaft deflection and what's really happening in this well time release. Now I'm going to take some, I took, uh, I spent a little time the last couple weeks and I was trying to decide exactly what I should share in the show. Obviously this is not an instructional video and obviously I'm going to make one and publish a book, but I'm going to just give you a little bit of information that you're going to find very interesting. And what we're doing is we're going to take a tour player, an optimized tour player, with a club head speed of 118 miles an hour, optimized for perfect impact in a modeling standpoint, and we're going to add a lady shaft or a senior flex, a flex shaft to that golfer, and we're going to talk about what that shaft is doing. 118 miles per hour club head speed had 2.8 inches of lead deflection at the moment of impact. What's lead deflection? Well, uh, this is with the driver, so this what I'm giving you this info is on with the driver. The center of mass of the club head is set way away from the shaft. It's in the middle of the head somewhere here. So it's going to seek to line up with the handle as that club comes around. And in a well-timed golfer, you could actually ruin, ruin that lineup. But anyway, I'll get to that in a second. In a well-timed golfer, when the club lines up, so to speak, the center of mass of the club head seeks to line up with the shaft. So this particular golfer with a lady shaft got 2.8 inches of that lead deflection, of that bowing of the club this way into the impact. So I brought a ruler out. I know how everybody likes rulers and dowels and things like that, so a nice little straight edge. And 2.8 inches of lead deflection. So that's how much lead deflection there was for this golfer with a lady shaft. The club was one inch in toe down deflection at impact as well. So not only 
is the center of mass set away from the shaft on this side. It's also set away from the shaft on, from this viewpoint as well. So if the center of mass of the club head's over here, it's going to deflect down as well to help line up with the shaft. This is going to really try to line up with the shaft. If we move this mass center in all different points on the club, it would have a severe effect on the impact because it's going to seek to line up with the shaft at the same time when the club is under a tremendous load. So we have this player, this tour player, with a lady shaft having one inch of toe down deflection at the point of contact. So keep those in your mind as we go on here. We have a dynamic loft gain of six and a one quarter degrees. So while this thing is obviously going into lead deflection, it's adding dynamic loft. Here the golfer picked up 6.25 degrees. It got a dynamic close of 5.5 degrees. So what is this all getting at? Well, if you took this tour player, this optimized tour player, and gave him a lady shaft, gave him a regular shaft, gave him a stiff shaft, the club head speeds would pretty much be very close to each other. There is negligible effect on shaft deflection and club head speed. But there is a tremendous correlation between face orientation, where the face is, and shaft deflection. So what's happening with this lady shaft for the tour player, because there was so much lead deflection, a gain in lead deflection, it created extra loft and an actual extra closing of the face. So if you take a ladies club and you're a powerful player and you hook it off the planet, it's because the golf club is dynamically closing when it comes into contact. Basic information. Now I'm going to get into the juicy stuff. In the toe up direction, at the top of the backswing, when the golfer's going in transition, we get, they gain the biggest bending mode of the club altogether. This golfer with the lady shaft did 4.2 inches in toe up direction. So here's the club at the top, in toe up towards the toe, right? So toe up is towards the toe this way. It's just orientated like that. In toe up deflection, 4.2 inches. That's a lot. So that's your biggest bending mode. I'm going to suggest to you when you're watching swings on photography and things like that, uh, in pictures and books, older books especially, be very careful what you're seeing. A lot of times when you see this super duper bending mode of the club, it's a little exaggerated because the way the camera shoots, it might snap the hands slightly before the club or the club slightly before the hands and then the other one is completely, and then the club ends up completely blurred. So you got to be very careful. Side note, it's enough for that for now. So we have maximum toe up deflection here, 4.2 inches with this lady shaft. So we have this club at its maximum bending mode at the top of the backswing in the transition, 4.2 inches. If there's anything else, it would be lead deflection. It would be where this club is in a slight lead mode. There is no lag deflection up here in the optimized golfer. There is no lag deflection of this club burying into a right forefinger or anything like that, like everyone believes. I mean, I even saw this little video clip where someone was pointing out that this club should bury against that forefinger. I should have lag deflection, sustain that lag deflection the whole time as if I'm moving like an industrial strength mop. I, it's, that's not what's taking place. And I don't really think you could also justify that as being the feel. We're not talking about feels here. We're talking about what is actually happening. That's what folks need to know. You need to know what's actually happening so you can go out and do it. So we have our maximum toe up deflection with slight lead. As the swing is coming down, the golf club fully recovers from those bending modes. There is no stressing the shaft and then sustaining what it feels like and dragging it down. There's not. The club fully recovers from that toe up deflection and that slight lead at about this point. So at about this point, the golf shaft has fully recovered. Now as this club starts to come around and the golfer puts pretty much their maximum torque, if you measured uh, you know, what the golfers are doing, they're pretty much putting their max torque into the club right here. 
that's when the speed gain would be great, and now that club starts to gain leg deflection. So there is like an equilibrium point. There's like an equilibrium point where how much force is being into the club and how, and how much force the club actually has. They're kind of like at the same amount right around there, and then the club gains a lot and it requires more hand pull, more torquing to be able to control and bend the path of that club. So as that happens, now we introduce our first ever version of leg deflection. So leg deflection starts to become present right around here. And maximum leg deflection is 1.8 inches on a lady shaft at 118 mile an hour club head speed. 1.8 inches. Take my ruler. 1.8 inches. There's 1.8 inches. So that would be how much the center of mass of the club goes backwards on the, on the on that point of maximum acceleration. So it would go back about that much at that point. I'm not trying to bend the heck out of this thing and drag it forever. This thing is going to gain its maximum here. Basically, it's a moment of time you're passing through. It's a normal, momentous type thing that happens to the club as the hand force has to increase to accommodate the bending of the path of this club as it comes around. That's when it goes from lag to lead as we well time. So this maximum lag deflection is somewhere in here and then it becomes that lead deflection bending mode as it comes into contact. If I try to, on the start down, if I try to put any lag deflection into the club, right, but lag deflection into the club by trying to bring my hands to the ball, I'm going to have this distorted bending of the club, movement of the club, and that's when I'm going to have that weird shape and weird path of the couple point that I was describing in the last video. So obviously the la these two things are related. Now, hope I haven't confused you yet. The idea of trying to lag the club down has done more detriment than anything in the last 20 years. Now, when I started my career teaching, I joined up and I taught someone else's system and we taught that. We taught to try to get leg, we taught to try to leave the club on the back forefinger and drag it down as much as we can. And I'm gonna suggest to you today that there is no leg deflection early in the downswing, that there, if anything, there's lead and the golf club fully recovers from any type of stress you put into it, right about here, and that golf club fully recovers from its bending mode. C.B. Daish, one of my favorite writers, pretty much summed it up. He wrote about nine chapters on golf. He was interested in golf. He was a very smart man. And he summed it up in the last sentence by saying, pretty much the problem of golf, what you have to solve as the golfer, is moving a club preparing to orientate the club for contact at the best speed possible as if the golf club through the hitting area was unsupported. So basically what he was saying is as that bending mode takes place that the club head is pretty much a freewheeling object in that impact area, which it is. That's why Brian brought up the concept of the release of the couple point or, or rotation of the couple point. And when you see those videos of the old-time golfers and the modern-day golfers, and you see that look after the contact of the movement or so-called rotation of the coupling point, that tells us one thing. That tells us that that club head was merely coasting into contact, and then the club head, the ball slowed the club head down, and it continued to coast after. Hope you enjoyed the new information. Another explosive golf show in the books. Look forward to the next one, which is going to be called The Deep, Plain, and Simple. Mike Jacobs, Explosive Golf Show. Thank you.